come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. All you got to do to help us out with that is go over to wherever you found us and hit that like, subscribe button, give us a star review or uh, maybe a, a rating, star rating or review. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. Uh, you're going to hear from the internet radio superstars. Allie, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by John. What did you infest us with tonight? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, uh, I figured the uh, the hot days of summer are coming for us soon, so I'd uh, uh, pick a apparently very hot movie. You did. Um, I you chose really 1975's did. Bug, directed by. Uh, Jean-Wan, how did you pronounce it, Colin? Svark. Savi? Svark? Svark. Svark? Yeah, I looked it up, Svark. actually. You can go to the, you know, they have those, like, pronunciation videos. I'm like, how do you yeah. pronounce? Oh, we know Jean-Wan Svark for. He directed uh, the Very Good Jaws 2 and the, I don't know, Supergirl. Did he also do Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeve? Was that his? Yeah, that was a TV movie, though, wasn't no, it? No, that was just the theatrical was film. Was it theatrical? Yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, yeah, Somewhere in Time, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He did a lot of TV stuff, a lot of TV movies, too. So he's done a lot of movies. Was he also Santa Claus, the movie? Was that his or yes. no? It was? That's it. Yes. Okay. All right. So once you're in with the salt kinds, right, uh, you yes. get to do yeah, Supergirl and Santa Claus, the movie. Uh, yeah, not not the Santa, not the Santa Claus. Santa Claus the movie, very different. Yeah, <laughs> how come it wasn't Supergirl the movie? It was Superman the movie, and Santa Claus the movie, not Supergirl right. the movie. No, just Supergirl. It is Supergirl. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, and I know uh, this is probably a shock for like three of you who actually made it to the very end of last week's episode when Sean promised <laughs> that he was going to watch 2005's House of Wax. So sorry, he and changed his uh, mind. Yeah, we don't edit things around here, so we uh, <laughs> we just let that one ride. <laughs> yep. So we were just checking, we're testing to see how many of you actually made it to the end of the episode. Um, right. Okay. So far, not many. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody <laughs> say anything yet. Uh, going like, wait, how come? Yeah, I thought we were watching House of Wax. Oh, well, yeah, it's it's relieved we're not watching it. That's true. it's funny though. I've had people because this happened before. I I picked a movie and then I changed my mind later on, and I had someone message me like a year later and was like, "Hey, question, why <laughs> did you change your pick a year ago?" I was like what and i told i was like oh yeah i forgot about that so it will happen someone will come back and be like why and you'll have to you'll have to explain yourself sean yeah they're like i was waiting for that house of wax review well you can just go back and listen to our tourist trap episode where we talk a lot about house of wax on that episode um okay so i'll tell you right now it's colin's fault it's because he did that at the end of the episode because he mentioned (laughs) another movie like it and i'm just like ah i don't want to have that conversation again fine Fine, I'll pick something else. Like a giant baby. Just, it was. Well, it was. It was. I didn't. I, it was a. Uh, I didn't feel it. Pick. It's just like ah, I guess we could do this. Oh, like, I, I was, was looking forward I to it today. To revisiting it. I mean, uh, it's still on the list. I think it's worthy of revisiting. But it's an anniversary year for it too, right? Yeah. What? Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, where well, did Bug I, come from? Why do you? Why do you want to see Bug? Had you seen it before? Uh, I had not seen it before. That's the major reason I picked it tonight is because I had not seen it before. All I've seen is like the picture of the woman's head getting set on fire by a bug. Yeah. And I was just like, and I think I saw the trailer and I'm like, I need to see that movie because the trailer is all the, his, like the, uh, everyone in hysterics throughout the movie. That's all in all the right. trailer. So yeah. there's a lot of screaming in the trailer. So I was just like, this looks good. Bugs so set people on fire. Stuff, huh? They save that <laughs> for when you, your ass is in the seat. That was a fucking surprise. <laughs> this movie is surprising. I'll give it that. Surprising. It did not go where I thought it was going to go. And congratulations, oh. Sean. You found a movie that I also have not seen. Although I have yes. seen like bits and pieces of it on TV. Right. 
to the point where I thought I had seen it. Now I'm watching it. I'm like, I don't remember like any of this. So, <laughs> nope, um, you have not seen it. This uh, bug is one of the movies that the 1970s had an affinity for doing these eco horror films, right? Mm -hmm. This is the nature run amok uh, subgenre of horror, which there's a lot of those in the 1970s. I was kind of hoping for a, uh, a uh, we were going to lightning was going to strike twice and we were going to get a kingdom of the spiders out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I nice. mean, it, it comes in close, I close. in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, you want okay. your kingdom of the spiders fix. You got to go for night of the lepus. That's uh, the other. Yeah. Small town under siege by giant okay. bunny rabbits. It's a great it's, movie. Uh, it's too bad we didn't get uh, <laughs> Shatner for the like alone by himself for 45 minutes yeah in this movie that would have made it much better yeah bradford dillman unfortunately is not a, william shatner like a, a name like shatner attached yeah yeah because bradford dillman is basically the star of this and the only other thing that i've seen him in is uh piranha he was in joe dante's uh what was it 78 uh piranha oh, wow. um he was like the lead in that that, you know, I know he's been in other stuff, but I haven't seen it. So uh, yeah, he doesn't have the. Guy. He's a what? He's a what? I said he's not a familiar guy. It looks like he was in some Dirty Harry movies. Yeah, that's right. He was in Magnum Force, wasn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's right. He was one of the yeah the dirty cops in Magnum Force and Sudden Impact. That's a Dirty was Harry. Was he? Movie, isn't it? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm wrong then. Maybe he was one of the the staff. I think um, he's one of the staff. Well, he's two different characters, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. That would be why. Oh, there you go. Um, he's the main name in this movie. Uh, I know, um, what's her name? Was it Joanna Miles? What's what's her yes. name? Joanna Miles. So, was she somebody prior to being in this film? or? That's a damn good question. I, she's know, given, I hope I see that she was in Judge Dredd. Yeah. Wasn't she given, like, second billing on the, in the credits? It was like Bradford Dillman and Joanna Miles. And then it's like she's barely in the I movie. So. Yeah. I think so. Uh, she did a lot of TV, a lot of TV, a lot of TV. Bug. Bug seems to be her big breakout from TV. Okay. Big Yikes. breakout, in quotes. And um, uh, Jesse Vint is in this movie. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a fan of Jesse Vint. I haven't seen him in a lot, but I'm going to watch more. I'll tell you that. But he's well, barely in it, too. Yeah. But Jesse Vint... Um, there's a, got some, you know, recognition here because we've actually uh, this movie puts Jesse Vint on the, holly, the sorry, the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Nice. If you're in three movies that we cover, you're inducted into the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. You get a, a plaque and your photo on the wall. We're going to put your, right. your photo up there. And Mr. Vint, uh, he was Those um, stars on the Walk of Fame are actually ours. That's I don't right. know if it, people don't know that. <laughs> it starts here. That money goes to us. That's yeah. all from us. Can Aww, you identify the movies that Jesse Vint was in that we covered? I can't remember. Well, he was the star of Forbidden World. Do you remember we did Forbidden World? <laughs> yes. That was Jesse yeah. Vint. And Jesse. Uh, he was also uh, like the Cadillac man or something who gets a, a flying uh, disc through his forehead or whatever. And I come in peace. The uh, Dolph Lundgren movie that some of you might know as Dark Angel, but he's in that, too. But he was a uh, writer, producer or writer, director in the 70s. Uh, Sean and I both, I think, discovered somewhere around the same time a movie called The Black Oak Conspiracy. Yes. Which is one of these like exploitation movies, you know, where uh, yes. it's like a southern set uh, um, movie where a guy comes back to his hometown and the, there, there's corruption everywhere. And eventually there's shotguns right. and monster. Right. Truck, He's got to fight the law. Like the law is corrupt and he has to take it upon himself to set the whole town right. Yeah. Me and Colin was like going through and listing all the like everything you need for a exploitation movie and I'm, I, we're pretty sure we can make one right now <laughs> we should like, take much. i'm still watching them i'm still going through those movies important stuff yeah right <laughs> um, this is important we, oh yeah. at least it sounded important that night yeah it was like this is going to be the most entertaining movie ever made um he was also in a uh a movie that uh i guess was the highest grossing movie of 1974 
based on how much it cost versus how much it made. And that's a movie that's probably he's most familiar for, for is the Macon County line, uh, which I guess was like a grindhouse hit that like played all over, you know, America drive uh, drive ins and uh, made, you know, X number its budget back. But uh, that's him and his brother, Alan Venter, both in that. They cross a sheriff, of course, when they go across the Macon County line. Um, he was also, I looked him up, uh, Jesse Vint also uh, was the uh, world celebrity chess champion in 1988. Wow, a little known fact. There you go. He's barely in this movie. Uh, the big <laughs> name associated with this movie is William Castle. Indeed. Right. Uh, producer William Castle. Uh, well, what can you tell us about William Castle? We've covered him before in our House on Haunted Hill episode, but can you give the yes. v- listeners a recap of who he is? I mean, he was a, a movie producer. He directed two, didn't he? Yeah. Or yeah, did he? But yeah, he did a couple of them. Was Mr. Sardonicus his? What? Mr. Sardonicus? Didn't, did he I, direct might House on Haunted Hill, the original one, or did he just produce them all? I, I can't remember. He just produced them all. I know he produced a lot of movies. Again, you know him from House, the older House on Haunted Hill, uh, Thirteen Ghosts. Yep. I believe he produced as well earlier on. Um, he was also famous for like uh, we talked about before his gimmick movies. Um, oh, what were some of the other ones? Um, the gimmicks that he, the Tingler, he the put, Tingler, he put, right? Uh, shocks uh, underneath people's seats. You know, little buzzers that would go off. Uh, 13 ghosts had illusion. O, where you'd wear 3d yes. looking glasses that would allow you to either see or not see the ghosts on the screen. House on haunted Hill was in emerge. O, another where a uh, giant skeleton came flying out o- over the audience. Right. that's memorable. One of them, Didn't I think do another, was, another bug movie with Vincent price beyond the tingler. I'm not, I don't recall, but I know that, uh, one of the movies that he did, uh, like you had, you could take out a life insurance policy if you were going to watch it just in case you died of fright and mm-hmm. sign a life, right. life insurance in the lobby. Was there a gimmick on bug? Uh, there was one he wanted to do. He wanted to put little, um, like little brushes at the bottom of movie theater seats. So it felt like bugs were brushing past your legs, Ew. but the <laughs> studio said no. <laughs> yeah, that's like we're not doing it. That would have been great. <laughs> Which would have been great. Yeah. Oh yeah. When I saw arachnophobia in the theater, I just I remember having that sensation just because the movie gave it to you by itself. I'm sure if something would have brushed my leg, I would have freaked out. Yeah, um, or if you're just or just sitting in the theater next to Colin, I'm sure he'll do something to scare you. <laughs> right, Colin? <laughs> it's been known to happen. Um, yeah. William Castle also uh, gained some respectability in 19 was it 68. He produced Rosemary's Baby. Mm. Um, and I believe that Bug was the last movie that he produced before he died. He died uh, what early 80s, 77. He died. Yeah, he died two years after this. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that sets up like who who these fo- folks were who made it. Uh, Bug is based on a novel, I believe, because William Castle also co-wrote the script with the novel's uh, author. I think it was Thomas Paine. Is that right? Page. Thomas Page. And what was the novel called? The Hephaestus Plague, something like that. Okay. Hephaestus Plague. Hephaestus, yeah. Which means Hephaestus, yeah. Which means Hephaestus means what? Fire. Uh, he's like the Latin Greek fire, Greek like god that. of fire. Yeah. yeah, I think he's like the uh, the he's like the the forger. You know, the for the guy who's down with the anvil, the blacksmith. Yeah, in Greek mythology. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um. Okay, so what's this movie about, Sean? What do we What do we got going on here in Bug? <laughs> Which which half of the movie? Well, I guess yeah. we got to start from the top. Okay, so that's what we're saying. This movie does have a, like it, it starts one way, and you think it's going to go a certain direction, and then sure. it becomes a different movie almost, or it settles in. Let's say it set it finds what it's yeah. actually about in the second half. Okay, so let's set up the first half of this movie. Okay, first of all, it's hot. That's that's your starting point. <laughs> it's hot. In this movie, um, <clears throat> we start out uh, 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 our main actor uh, dropping off his wife at church. And while she's at church, a giant earthquake happens in this town, which it looks like graboids are attacking under the church because the floors are rolling. Pews are falling over. 
everything gets destroyed. Yeah, it has that one effect where, uh, like, it actually happens in the thing too, in the basement, you know, in the thing when the thing's attacking and the, the, the right, ground the like rolls. Yeah, yeah, there's like you can tell somebody's pulling like a giant. It happens in Children of the Corn too. That thing that burrows through the, you know, it's somebody somewhere pulling this thing under the ground. And it makes the whole floor like you know undulate. Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool. Always a fun trick. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> and then trucks start exploding. <laughs> That's your beginning. But why do the trucks start exploding? It, arson bugs. Yeah, arson bugs. <laughs> okay, so there it is. <laughs> and Jesse, Vince, Jesse Vince kicking them into a gourd. There's a giant chasm uh, where the ground has broken open um, in somebody's yard uh, from this earthquake. And it seems like something has escaped. And we come to find out it's arson bugs. Giant cockroaches who start fires with their ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It rubs its ass together and fire... <laughs> Happens. Yeah, for some reason in my memory of this, it was the antenna. You know, to rub the antenna together, but no, it's actually it shits fire, or Basically. it shits a spark. These bugs. Well, that's. I mean, that's. There's there are actual bugs that do that. The bombardier uh, is it the bombardier beetle does that. Mm. Does w- with the antenna or with its ass? No, like it it shoots like chemicals out of its rear end that catches things on fire. What? That's like that's a real that's a real bug. Yeah. Well, all right then. You learn something new every day. The Bombay bomber. What is it? I think it's. I think it's the. It's the bomb. I think it's the bombardier beetle. The it's bombardier a bombardier beetle. something. I think it's a beetle. Okay. The there's bomber more reasons. Is way different. There's but, more reasons to hate bugs every day, man. It really <laughs> is. Like they can do anything, and it's fucking disturbing. <laughs> Last month it was murder hornets. Now you're telling me about this. It's just like I don't Arson need to know bugs. anymore about bugs. I know enough. Yeah, like maybe cockroaches. bug movies can make a comeback and they'll start breeding the murder hornets with the Bombaday beetles. If, and- if there is not a murder hornets movie on the sci-fi channel in the next six months, I don't know what we're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> murder that's, that's hornets live. versus why Lake Placid. Why haven't we gotten a movie about those ants that like infect or the fungus that infects the brain of ants and then like controls their body and makes them commit suicide? Well, I mean, have you been like, watching? Have you been watching the Sci Fi Channel? I mean, are we saying no, that I mean, hasn't like a happened? Real movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, real movie. Yeah, it's like this. It's this. I mean, the, the video game The Last of Us was like based on that. But yeah, it's this type of fungus that like rots away at your brain and causes basically the movie The Happening to happen. Mm. Nice. I'm down with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, this um, this movie. So it, it starts off. So this is a. Um, a kind of a template for this genre because both um, Kingdom of the Spiders and uh, Night of the Lepus, you know, just as the two that we've covered that I'm mentioning here, um, but they share, this is almost like something from like 50s alien invasion movies also, right? You got a small Mm -hmm. California town uh, where this, you know, something lands or something burrows up from the center of the earth um, yeah. accidents start the whole, happening. The whole thing about the earth opening and then them like coming out, it felt very invasion movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It did. Because then it becomes up to, I mean, it's a small town. So like, who are you going to turn to? It's like the high school science teacher, right? Becomes, uh, the, 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 the person with the most scientific knowledge, uh, to try and figure out what the hell is actually happening. How did they find out that it would, that, that but we see, uh, bugs in the uh, in the tailpipe of a car. I think the second car that explodes and kills people. Mm-hmm. We see the bugs inside the tailpipe, and then when they come out, it's smoking, and then the car explodes. So we're like, "Oh, bugs! How did they figure it out?" Guy goes. This is a, one of the guys. We'll call him Joe Bob because I forgot his name. Um, the crack in the ground is right next to his house, so he goes out to look at it, <laughs> and fire starts sprouting up around him. And he sees that bugs are the ones responsible for it. So, like, bushes are starting on fire, which it's a good thing he's not a religious man. Otherwise, the burning <laughs> bushes would give him pause. But he sees that, and he tries to pick one up, and he gets burned and everything. And, and the poor cat. Oh, oh, the cat. I forgot about the cat. A oh, cat yeah. gets burned Major alive. points deducted from this movie for that shit. Seems like they may have actually burned a real cat. Uh, I'm pr- pretty confident they did. Yeah. They may have. Do we figure out where is it ASPCA? No, what's the uh, American Humane Society? Yeah, because uh, they were. I think 
that organization came along after Heaven's Gate, the movie Heaven's Gate, Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate, because I think they killed horses uh, with explosions. I don't know if it was on accident or on purpose during that movie. And from that point on, I think the uh, movie, uh, you know, there was a ordinance, a rule signed within uh, the motion picture industry that, you know, there had to be someone monitoring animal activity so this is pre right. that time so it's possible that they could have got away with it it looks like they're setting fires on this little cat's head in close-up and burning yeah. it and then later we see you know what has happened to you know to the cat and they have a dead cat and like part of its you know head is scalded and it's like oh they may have like actually killed that cat to get this effect in this movie yeah, that's um, not cool the um they end up, so Joe Bob or whatever his name is, takes the, uh, I think his name is Mark or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. He's a student, I believe, at the uh, at the college. Yeah. Right? And so he brings the bugs to uh, Bradford Dillman's character, the professor, um, to be like, you know, hey, have you ever seen any, any kind of a bug like this? So there's a lot of, uh, they discuss the ph- uh, physiology of the bug. And this is where I'm kind of curious because it, like they're like, look at it. It has no eyes. Look at it. It has, you know, like yeah. these long uh, and they're using real bugs. Do we know what kind of actual bugs were used in the making of the movie? I mean, it's uh, they. it doesn't say anywhere. I tried to look for it. I mean, it's got at some points just got to be the hissing cockroaches the and Madagascar be... hissing cockroach. That's what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, those are pretty standard for movies and stuff. And so, uh, the fear factor roaches. Right. They were also built like they built bugs. Really? Oh, for the yes. end, probably. Yeah, when we get to that, uh, to that I think point. they built like some of those close-ups of the bugs, like undulating and stuff like that. I think those were built bugs as well. Oh, really? I would have thought that was real because that looks. I, think I don't so. know. They exploded bugs like in slow mo on camera, so I I don't think they're oh. above any of that, Sean. Yeah, so. I don't know, but well, I mean, I read that the the person who created them uh, is a teacher. And she keeps them on her desk for the students to look at. So <laughs> bugs like big beetles were created for this movie. Yeah, there was something. Uh, there was a, there was a person credited at the beginning of the movie for uh, you know the bug sequences or whatever. The bug right. sequences are all you know super close up. I mean, it looks it's shot like a movie. Uh, you know, in and among these bugs, and they act. I mean, they actually pull off some feats later on that I'm not entirely sure how it was uh, created, but uh, we'll get there. Starvation. So basically, they're explaining. You know, it's like okay, these bugs are some. You know, where'd they come from? They figure that they come from the 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 crevice in the earth, they and come from the center of the earth, Colin. That's where all creatures come from. Well, they do say that it, <laughs> they were trapped underneath a uh, volcanic. Um, you know, a volcanic layer, right, of rock right. or something, and this earthquake has set them free. And um, this is all conjecture on our characters' parts; they have no idea. Yeah, but it's an educated guess. The guy's a science, a high school science teacher. I mean, who right. else are we going to listen to? Sure. Is um, it is it high school or uh, college? Sorry, college. Uh, is college, it college? Do we teacher. know? I don't think is we it, know. I don't think it's ever like, specified. Yeah, we just know that he's involved. He's some sort of like biology teacher or something. I don't think he, I don't know if he's actually, I don't know if he's actually an entomologist or if he's just like really good with bugs. I don't know. It does, all, we I don't know, know. all we know is he can talk to squirrels. He does. That's true. He's the squirrel whisperer. Yes. What happens there, Holly? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he makes like these cooing sounds and lures a little squirrel onto his shoulder to prove something to his students that, at some He's point, cool teacher. At some point, man could communicate with animals or something. I don't know. He said that, like that man used to be able to, and somewhere along our evolution, yeah. we've lost that power. But yeah, he's got a squirrel that wanders into the classroom because that happens often, you know, in classrooms. Uh, and then he's able to coax it onto his uh, his back. Squirrel. Our acting. first sign that we should have noticed that this dude is nuts. <laughs> when you're too close, that's not a squirrel animals. pun. Yeah. <laughs> um, the. Uh, so he's brought any he figures out that like, you know, so he starts trying to understand how the uh, alien menace works. Um, but prior to this, okay, so this is the first half of the movie. We meet a bunch of other characters, right? 
who are basically set up to um, get killed, I guess, or run around. And the movie kind of at this point, what I guess what I was thinking was going to happen is we're going to follow a trajectory of, you know, uh, nature, one nature attacks movie that. Um, but I did kind of think that we were like really quickly into the, the the point in the movie where they were trying to figure out what was happening um that eventually there's just going to be tons of these things eventually they're going to have to call in the military eventually there's going to be bugs just everywhere and you know right like the birds or you know whatever some point yeah right or something's going to happen like that but that is not where this movie went um the turning point in the movie is correct me if i'm wrong but it's the moment where uh, the the teachers. Well, there's a hint that there's something off with him because he when he figures out that like the the bugs are actually living, uh, they have the bends basically because it came up from the center of the Earth's core and they have uh, uh, gone through pressure layers and basically the the pressure on the surface is too much for them so they're highly they're all in pain right and they're like ready to blow and that's why they can't really move and so he pokes one and it. Ex- Explodes in slow motion and its guts come flying out. Um, it really does. This is pretty gross. Yeah, this is like yeah. a snuff scene, man. <laughs> they were like blowing air through a bug, dude. Its guts to fly out all over the place. Or they, they may eventually put it in a it. pressure chamber or something and, and blew it yeah. up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but he figures out that that's how we're going to kill them. So that's why I'm like, okay, uh, you know, you're just thinking like they, you kill them by, uh, by depressurizing them. How the hell are you going to do this on a massive scale? And then mm-hmm. there's that one scene where the uh, the other uh, science teacher says something to them. It's like, well, they're all going to die anyway, Jim, because uh, they can't, you know, the pressure's killing. They got pressure sickness. They're on their way out. You know, eventually they're just all going to die off. Mm-hmm. And to which he says, he, well, he doesn't say anything, right? He gives a little smile and he's like, yeah, they'll all die. Yeah. I've, I've got to go. Jim's yeah. not okay. This Jim's is yeah, okay. this is where we're like Jim's not okay. And the thing that pushes <laughs> Jim over the edge is what? Uh his, his wife. wife dying? Yeah, yeah, what happens to his wife? Uh, uh Michaela, <laughs> I think you should describe she, it first much as you're laughing. <laughs> she is it's it was her birthday, right? Yeah. She's making a cake yeah. she was doing? Okay. So there was a lot that happened in this movie. So I I'm still st- stuck on like the third act. We'll get to it. Um and so she's like talking about making a jelly chicken. Which, ugh. Holly, yeah, tell us about the aspic. This is called an aspic, and it was very popular in like the 50s, 60s, maybe into the 70s. Uh, big with Julia Child and the art of French cooking. She had a few recipes in that. In that yeah, it's it's basically like a Jello mold, but made with meat, <laughs> and it's it's usually. Usually beef, because I think they typically use um, the beef bones to make the gelatin naturally. But sometimes it could be chicken as well. But it's a beef jello mold, essentially. It's fucking disgusting. It yeah. Sounds like what Rachel made on Friends. <laughs> it, tastes like, it tastes like feet. <laughs> there, Holly, I'll have to show it to you. But there's like a, I think it's on Instagram. There's a page I follow that's literally just a bunch of like disgusting recipes from like cookbooks from like the 50s 60s and 70s and oh my god the shit that they would like this yeah. just throw it all together it'll be yeah. something a meat jelly yeah. so this is a please je- send that to me i love that shit <laughs> yeah. this was a jelly what was it a jelly chicken jelly turkey jelly chicken okay. chicken yeah all right yeah. for her birthday she's making the jelly chicken oh there that so, was, oh sure. john found a picture That's- <laughs> look at that, that. just looks like shredded chicken in a jello mold <laughs> it is <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, there's um, some broth in the Jello or something like that, so it's a savory. Uh, yeah, it's savory. It's it's like if your main course was a Jello mold. Yeah, uh-huh. that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. Not everything needs to be that texture. You know what I'm saying? Like this one looks like vagina. Jello's already pushing it. You know, oh. <laughs> that that's shrimp. I think so. That's oh, salmon. Oh God, I think it's salmon. <laughs> what is in the middle though? The corn. <laughs> Well, they put, yeah, vegetables in there. It is. It's corn. Oh, my God. This is an abomination. This is the most disgusting <laughs> thing. Yeah, see, now you're going to go down a rabbit hole, Sean. That's right. Have fun with that. And the oh folks at home are doing it right now. They're like, ASP, A-S-P-I-C. Look it up. Yes. Uh, A-S-P-I-C. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so, so, so tell, what else happens so, here? It's her birthday, and she wants to eat a jello mold full of chicken. And <laughs> it's like uh, really 
excited as she's reading this recipe. She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. She's reading it out loud. And yes. one of these bugs <laughs> crawls up the back of her her shirt onto her neck. And we see it kind of creep over her shoulder. And then it just starts butt zapping her in the head until she catches <laughs> on fire. And then we have a but hilarious, obvious... We have a hilarious, obvious stunt double. She turns into like a six foot tall man all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. The she starts... gains like a foot night. <laughs> yeah, and she, and she starts the Brady house on fire. <laughs> it is the Brady house. Yeah. Yeah, they filmed on the Brady house. I was looking for the uh, the double, uh, whatever, the microwave and the stove in the wall. Yeah, the yeah. double ovens on the corner. Yeah. yeah. I saw it. Uh, um, did, they ever, did they ever show the outside of the house? No. Or they just they just showed the interior. Okay, that's what I thought. It it was when when I first noticed was when he's in the kitchen making a sandwich. I'm like, wait a second, I know that. <laughs> did they show the staircase? No, they I think did. it's a little different oh. on the interior. Okay, yeah, they, showed, they remodeled they it a little the bit. Kitchen. They showed the kitchen and they showed the den, and you can tell by both of those that it's the Brady house. Yeah, gotcha. I'm watching. Yeah. The remember scene. that staircase. I'm watching oh, the for- scene where her hair gets set on fire right now, and when the bug comes up on her shoulder. It, you can tell someone's controlling it because it peaks up and then it bounces off to be under her hair. Like someone's <laughs> make, making something like walk. Puppet. Yeah. Oh Is it God. like on a stick or it's just like, doo, doo, doo. it's gotta be. And the stunt man is wearing a black mask, which you can obviously see. Yeah. That's, it, it is the worst cover up for a stunt man <laughs> I've seen in a long time It's bad. Yeah. I think in a lot of those cases they wear, you know, they, they are wearing something over their faces, usually like a mold of the actor or, uh, yeah, something just dark. So when it's yeah, on like fire, Ryan it gives you that contrast. Drive. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what they do now, you know, but back then I think they were just like, nope, we're wearing, you know, we're taping them up with something, to, you know, that's soaked in water or something to try and protect them. Um, that's one of the big centerpieces. There is a bug attack early on where a bug gets on a phone and a woman lifts it to her ear and the thing attaches to her ear and starts burning her and she can't like knock it off. But these scenes do give you that kind of like, ooh, there's bugs crawling on people, you know, heebie jeebies. Um, but because his wife dies, uh, Bradford Dillman goes into a very dark place. He trashes his house, you know, when his friends come over, he's like sitting in the corner. And it's a science lab. Well, that's what it was. It's a science lab. Yeah. Um, but the strange thing that happens right around this point in the movie is we are shown that, yes, all the bugs are on their back. They're all all over the landscape uh, dying. And I'm like, this isn't going to be a movie with no conflict resolution, right? It's like the bugs show up, burn stuff, and then die on their own. Like, <laughs> what's happening here? Where's the Air Force dropping, you know, napalm and, you know, whatever. Or the guys out with the flamethrowers or whatever they have to do. And that doesn't right. happen. You're, you're still riding that Chuck Norris high from last week, aren't you? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if they came out with the flamethrowers and this is where they discover, like, they can't be burned. They live to the flame. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, are they really that much of a threat? If it's just like war of the worlds, we're just like breathing our air kills them. You know, like who who gives like the threat's gone. Who gives a fuck? You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's why it was strange that this happened at this point in the movie. And I'm like, oh, well, how much of this movie is left? And so then it's like, well, what is going to be the dynamic from here? You know, because at this point, I think the movie this is a bad move for this movie. Well, it basically jettisons all the characters from the first half of the movie because they apparently just go back to their own lives. The menace is taken care of. But Bradford Dillman uh, caught in this funk of depression, he, like because it's almost like in one hand, he blames the bug for killing his wife and he hates them. Right. <laughs> yes, but very, at the same I'm, I'm watching him cry right now. But at the same time, he's also like because of his uh, the scientific curiosity is like, well, what if, you know, we actually gave these, you know, if, what if I created an environment and he does this with a deep sea diving helmet that he gets off of like one of the students or whatever, uh, he builds a pressurization chamber to put the one remaining bug in um, and try and like bring it to life. Basically like, okay, we're going to create the, the, the atmosphere that it's comfortable with. And then... I mean, once you do that, why don't you introduce it to another common household cockroach and see if it will mate with it? Like you do. Yeah. 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 
So this is a bad move, it turns out, on his part. And we're kind of like, because he's explaining all of his process in great detail as he records it. And his hygiene continues to deteriorate. And his living conditions, he lives by a single <laughs> single bulb, light bulb, you know. Uh, <laughs> You're right. He eats out of cans. Well, that's not true, because I was making a point about that. Like, the crazy person would eat out of the can. He at least put it, you know, into a bowl to eat it. But anyway, what <laughs> happens? Papers stacked everywhere like the Unabomber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very unclean. Yeah, newspapers everywhere. So mm-hmm. what what happens here? What is the outcome of this crazy experiment that he is uh, undertaking? Uh, and the cockroach produces a purse. What's like a little purse? A cockroach <laughs> Other, purse. It, it really is. It looks like one, and it's. Uh, I thought it was going to be have one uh, big cockroach in it, but apparently it's a it's a purse full of many new baby cockroaches. Yeah. So this it's like movie, it's like the spi- it's like the spider sack, basically. Right. It's, it's like arachnophobia when the one they bring yeah. back from uh, from the Amazon mates with a common house spider, and this is the yeah. new one they get. Yeah. So this is bug version 2.0. Now halfway through the movie, we get a completely different bug. What yeah. characteristics does this bug have? <laughs> they talk. <laughs> Okay. I can you, communicate. You didn't see Your that class. coming. <laughs> Admit it. You didn't see that coming because no one no. saw that coming because that's crazy. And that's no. where this movie goes. There's a scene where he's saying something to the, well, they kill the, these new bugs kill the original bug when he reintroduces it into the environment, right? They gang up on so it. And they burn very, it. Um, uh, uh, I'm not mischievously, but he does so because he he thinks he knows what's going to happen to this bug. He's like, "Oh, so you want to go back and be with the family, huh?" Yeah. And then he kind of sits there, and <laughs> weeps, weeps, weep, cries as is like this thing that killed my wife. Finally, finally, <laughs> yes. I killed it with my own engineering. Um, so the new bugs keep escaping every night from the fucking little box that he's got them in. And doesn't lock the box. Why you wouldn't, I don't know. <laughs> he ends up, uh, or they end up, we see them congregating around a newspaper. First, he first The first thing they do is they attack him. I yeah, think. they bite him while he's sleeping, right? Was that right. the first yeah. thing they did? Yeah. How did he first find out? Because he well, feeds them steak. Because the first Bug 1.0 ate consumed ash. That's why it lit everything on fire, because it would consume ash. That's what it lived on. Bug right. 2.0 lives on raw meat yes uh so yeah at night they actually crawl all over him and start eating him uh he wakes up scrapes them all off and of course puts them dutifully back in the box which he doesn't lock and then he he sees them right around the newspaper and he's recording he's saying something about to the effect that like um they they he says something like they they understand that i am the dominant one yeah they understand (laughs) i am in charge they listen to the sound of my voice Because yeah, he's gone he's off the knee bed. Yeah. But then, one night, his greatest dream or nightmare comes true. He wakes up, and what does he see on the wall? Live, laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, it will when I'm through with it. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, <laughs> The bugs form his last name on the yeah. wall. Like so, a bunch of bugs, right? And this is these are the effect scenes that I'm like, now how did they do it? Because obviously there's something there that they're attracted to or eating or something. Right. I don't know, but these are pretty good effects. Where these bugs, probably done in reverse photography or whatever, maybe yeah. that's how you do it. Maybe you just you write the word, you yeah, stick a bunch of bugs on it, and then as they wander away, you play that backwards, and it looks like they come up to the. But so they start spelling out letters. So he, you know, says, you know, as he says a word or a letter, you know, W, and then they go and form W on the wall. X. Then they go and form X. And then, as with our episode virus, whenever you have a super intelligent organism <laughs> trying to communicate with a human being. They have to say, we are alive. It's like, we live. That's what it was. I, we I, live. I never, we I never live. laughed. That made me laugh so hard when they <laughs> come back to we live on the wall. Yep. Me too. Oh I God. wish there would have been more of them, though, so they could have spelled something even funnier, you know? Oh. But that was pretty great. Hungry. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I was More hoping safe, that they would please. they would warn him, you know, like we live, you die, something like that. That would have been, sure. you know, we He's live, like, you die, and then he turns peace. around like, oh no, peace, no peace. Um, he does still continue to uh, experiment with them at this point. Am I correct? Uh, this character is a fucking he- idiot. That he's uh, he's uh, he likes to watch bug fucking. <laughs> like he's very interested in the anatomy and uh, processes uh, processes of the bugs. That means rooting we, them on. We get to look, watch a lot of bug fucking. Yes. Uh, I'm not understanding what his motivation is at this point. No, me neither. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Once mm-hmm. a scientist, always a scientist. He's just. But they all, killed his wife. Fun. And he killed the other bug. But then the one thing but is then like continued creating the same problem and made it worse. Right, because it's his. Well, I think he's gone mad at this point. But it's his creation now. Like he's and he's trying to have dominion over them. He's just like I will create the thing that destroyed part of my family, and I will control it. That's but my he thinking. made it worse because if he would have just let them die out, the the bug 1.0 die out from the pressure the first time around. None of this other stuff would have happened. Right. Well, don't like, that, there's your worse? death wish vengeance right there. The scientists yeah. always like keep going too far and make it worse. But that, but like so, so his love for yeah. science outweighs his love for his wife is what this movie's saying. Well, his wife's gone at this point. Yeah. Well, okay, his grief for his wife. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like it. It's, like this movie. What is it? What is his his character doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, that's how he's dealing with it. He's dealing with his grief by like focusing on his work. I have to complete this. Is this is, is super important work because this is you know unique form of bug and then ultimately an intelligence that can communicate with human beings. You know, I mean, this is like a big deal for him, but I was still, but once it gets the taste for human flesh, yeah. Like you still keep going past that. <laughs> right. Cause well, initially I thought maybe we we're going to have a situation like mimic here where like you breed the one bug to kill the other bugs. But at the point when he had created the killer 2.0 bug, the first ones had all been, they all died on their own. So That's I was like, point. okay, that would have made make sense. Right. So this is just, well, it's, I think, um, this is going into this other like 1970s genre. Well, I mean, this is everything, right? It's like science. You got to keep mm-hmm. your eye on those scientists because they are too curious and will eventually, you know, like uh, destroy the entire world with their, you know, without any kind of safeguards on, uh, you know, their processes. Because they're just yeah. following the curiosity without, you know, uh, regard for moral whatever. You know, this is in all these movies. It's, it's, they're always cautionary it's tales. Science, yeah, uh, and that's what you have here. But this is not what I thought I was getting into. I thought I was getting into the alien invasion mm-hmm. movie, and it becomes the Frankenstein. You know, it's Doctor Frankenstein yeah. run amok. <laughs> right in the second half of the movie, uh, panic in the streets, bugs everywhere, people running around with bugs attached to their faces, screaming. Like, yeah. Spiders. Yeah, I was yeah. Like, like you were really looking for another kingdom of spiders. I really was. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry, I this got I got like those movies the in the universe. pipeline, Sean. They will be coming soon because there's a <laughs> whole shitload of them <laughs> created are. during this there era. But go. this one is like primarily contained to this guy's house at, from this point. Yep. Um, things get worse when uh, one of his friends, I believe it's the other, another teacher the wife of the other uh, science teacher comes out to visit him to check on him. Cause it's like, well, you know, his wife died and we haven't heard from him in a while and everybody who goes to the house gets turned away. So she goes out there and of course he had left for like the one time and you know, in like three weeks or whatever, he actually left his house. I can't even remember what for contrivance. Uh, she <laughs> comes to the house and is of course attacked by the killer bugs. Um, this is the screaming and the running that I wanted. Yeah, because it was kind of horrifying. Just the way that they cut in, like, in the middle of a scream, like these 70s movies would do. Like, usually you use the audio, so the audio track is consistent when you cut, right? From the wide shot to the close-up. But I've seen this done in other 70s movies where, like, the woman will be screaming in one shot at a certain pitch, and then they cut in on her, and the pitch is different, and it's like you know, elevated or whatever. And you're just like, Oh my God. Like, Oh, Oh, this is getting so much worse. <laughs> it feels like you're watching a real incident. You know, I guess right. maybe that's the way it reads to me, but and um, that's, and it also feels like they're throwing cockroaches at her face <laughs> with the sound effect that they put in there. She's yeah. like looking up at the sky and they <laughs> drop on her face. And it's just like someone's chucking them at her. 
Well, before like we really actually, you're bringing it. up a good point. Before we venture into the ending of this movie, um, the sound effects. Mm. What are these? Because, you know, I mean, you got uh, roaches that set things on oh, fire. Hey. What do they sound like? <laughs> like you, you, I think we both cracked it. It sounds like uh, matches shaking and then a flint lighting. Yeah. yeah. It's the and exact it sounds noise. Like it sounds like they're using their little bug hands to smack two pieces of flint together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. I was Which is what I'm it. picturing the whole movie. <laughs> I was trying to figure yes. out what the fuck that sound was, and I'm like, well, if you take a box of matches and just go, ch -ch -ch, that could be yeah. it. That's exactly uh, what it is. Uh, the score from the movie is all electronic. Uh, there's no it's, actual it, music. No, music. It, it sounds like Star Trek, the original series, like beeps and <laughs> just those electronica noises. What'd you think of it? Uh, no, it's not bad. Like I, I don't have a problem with it. It's very. Uh, I'm, I was like I always thought I was hearing like boop 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 boop. So it's a little it's a little much, but uh, well, that's fine. I mean, personally, I thought there were scenes where it's like a real you know like score here would have uh, you know amplified right. what was yes. going on. Yeah. yeah, that's what you thought too. Oh, yeah, yes. it should have had more than just the beep boop bop sounds. Yeah. Maybe you, know, you could do like a hybrid or something. I don't mind sure. that stuff because it is kind of tonal and creepy, but it's just, it doesn't. You can't have just that. You yeah. got to have more. Yeah. yeah. Especially in a movie where it's like basically a play, it's confined to a house, you know? I mean, um, yeah. So what? Uh, I would love to see this as a play. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Except just people dressed as big bugs. Oh like my God. Next to him on stage. <laughs> <laughs> like doing real bug stuff, but they're just that big size so you can see them. Oh, this is, I'm writing this play. And this set is just a couch and stacks of newspaper. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and then he's like looking at it and then a light comes on side stage and there's big <laughs> bugs over there doing what he's seeing in the box. Yeah. This is brilliant. Yeah, you, uh, Copyright uh, 2020 Saturday Night Freak Show. We haven't broken Hell that yeah. out in a while. You could, you could do like have like the big Gallagher size couch. Like... <laughs> You know what oh I mean? God, yes. You sure. could do that. <laughs> well, this is great. well. We don't want to confuse people and think of the actual play bug that was turned into a movie with uh, was it Ashley Judd and Michael Shannon. Yeah, oh, I worked at the yeah. movie theater when that came out, and so many people walked out of that movie. I still haven't seen it. That's a William no, Friedkin movie, either. but I think it was based on a play. Um, it takes place in a hotel room only, I think. So that makes sense. Yeah. They th start thinking they have bugs under their skin. It's schizophrenia or something. But um, yeah, uh, people were mad at that movie. I remember. So if you I thought, never saw it. if you thought that was the episode you were listening to, ha -ha, we got talking <laughs> bugs in this movie. In this movie. <laughs> I kind of wish that Michael Shannon was the guy in this movie, though. That'd be great. We could remake That'd it. Be awesome. How much do you think I he think, goes for? Wait, wait, Michael Shannon stars in the play. Yes. There you go. That's how you. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's, that's it. What we do. Just resist the urge to turn it into a musical with singing bugs instead of talking bugs. <laughs> then you get Joe's apartment. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. So at the end of this movie, so basically, um, you know, there's more. Uh, he's got. You know, the, the woman has died. Uh. So now that's on his conscience. Um. But the bugs. Um. They also have become, uh, now they can breed, right? Yes. They are reproducing. So now there's other bugs with other egg sacs. And I believe these bugs, uh, this, these are the, the thinking ones, right? That can communicate. Even though that plot thread, after they announce that they can think or that they can mm. communicate, there's really no, nothing there's done with that. No, they, no not a, really. They, they describe there being a hive mind, and when he kills some of them, the other ones feel it as well. And they kind of get into his brain a little bit. Well, I think the whole that, thing's yeah. happening. You were saying, why is he continuing working? It's because he's got bug pheromones going on all so. over the place. Just like you were saying about the fungus that this is the right. movie. Bug pheromones, because they're all in his apartment, have made him into like a zombie where he's doing their bidding. Maybe they yes. were controlling him the whole time. I mean, they can talk to him on the wall. So, yeah, that but was like, what if it was, what if it's only in, because they were only reading like the classified ads, like the, the <laughs> misconnection ads and stuff. They can only talk to each other with that language. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Just using 
Dude, I love reading <laughs> misconnections. They're fucking hilarious. Oh, They're oh so funny. Like, so it funny. never gets old. The bugs no, on the wall just say, saw you on the train, blonde. Please contact me. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what are these bugs talking about? <laughs> well, lead oh, us man, home here. Sean, what? You should write a script just using misconnections posts. Oh. <laughs> In in your in your play, you're saying for the play for this? No, oh, just anything just, in general. Write something, but you can only use the text as it's written. No editing from misconnections posts. I'm putting this on my list of projects for quarantine. <laughs> There's lots of bad grammar in those too, so have fun with that. You can't see it, but I've turned into the scientist. <laughs> like, if I turn the computer around, you're going to see bugs on the wall spelling out messages to me. <laughs> Well, take us home, I'm Sean. Fine. What I'm happens fine. at the I'm end fine. of this movie? What What are we in for? What What is Bug Version Three? That's right. <laughs> well, they um, the bugs escape. They hatch an escape plan, and they're taking their newest egg sac. Like it's like the bugs from Starship Troopers. Like they are in the movement. They are the feet to get the to get the egg sac back to the um, the crater in the ground, the split in the ground, because they're returning home, and they drop it in there. Um, and then the uh, scientist returns home. He finds the dead lady out in his like shed. Um, and then he hears later on in the night, he hears um, uh, a new sound coming from the crater and a big red like light coming up from that. And here comes bug 3.0, the devil bug, because they are red flying Cockroaches. And they got big green eyes. These ones can actually see. So these are the hyper intelligent bugs that eat human flesh and can fly. Can't fly and still burn you because he's still getting burned. That's right, because they attack him in his house. They can also break through glass windows. <laughs> yes. That was he, the best. He closes the doors and all that to keep them out. There's this huge flurry a flutter of these creatures flying around out in his yard. Mm -hmm. And they attack him and attack the house and burn him to death. Yes. Okay. So the he, whole idea is here. I mean, this is again, the cautionary tale. It's like you scientists who pushed the envelope too far and meddled in, you know, things that you weren't in the natural order. You get punished. Don't play God. That's right. Don't, Don't play, play God. Because yep. he gets too punished. Too much time thinking if you could, you didn't stop to think if you should. Mm -hmm. But the problem with a movie of this type is like, so that, I mean, basically once we settled into this uh, second and third act, one room uh, movie, I mean, I guess that's the, uh, that's an acceptable outcome for it. It's like, it's about this guy tampering with nature and then eventually nature kills him. But uh, what is the net, you know, I mean, like I'm sitting there well, going like, well, what's the next stage of this? Isn't this, this is like an apocalypse movie, right? Where, or doomsday scenario where now you've tampered and made this new creature that is, has like, you know, what do they say? They have, uh, their, their shells are like steel, you yeah. know, now you've created this like uh, bug that can't be killed <laughs> that flies right. and that lives off of human flesh. Uh, this is and like the, the movie's over. And the, yeah. What? Okay, I know. Like, we need to know if 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 it's nature versus man, and then nature kills man. Well, nature but, will continue on. But correct me if I'm wrong. This is how it, it. This is how it came across to me. It looked like once he goes into the pit, all of the flying bugs follow him in, and then it like collapses on itself. Right. So to me, it it kind of was saying like they're all they went back where they came from, and like that's it. I yeah, guess that's what they were trying to say. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I got out of no, it. I, that's why I took it. He's on fire and he can't tell where he's going as he runs out of the house. And he falls into the pit, and then, like Holly says, they they seem to be following him in, and his entrance yeah. into the pit, his body falling in, maybe because he was on fire. I don't know. Starts another earthquake, which I don't get. But it's like this. I guess is a clean way for the film to not leave an open end apocalypse, right? Mm -hmm. we would Why wouldn't you want in, to? In the sequel rights two. alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, even uh, Kingdom of the Spiders ends with a kind of a doomsday note, like, "Oh my God, they've gotten out of here!" And the, you know, the the at first here, and then the world, you know, kind of thing. Right. Um, Night of the Lepus, uh, the humans are able to. The military shows up and you know figures out some plan to actually stop the giant bunny menace. Um, yeah, in this one, it's kind of like, uh, I mean, I guess at the end of the birds, it's like, well, the birds are still, you know, 
uh, out there to attack people. This is like, nope, they're contained. Yeah. We got them. Don't, you don't have to worry, yeah. folks in, at home in the theater. Don't have well, nightmares. So all the bugs have been, uh, they all went back to hell where they came from. That's not how you make a movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a that's not a good ending. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm still trying to wrestle with well, that because sure. I mean, there was some imagery, you know, of the the bug uh, uh, creatures like sitting on the trees or whatever. He's, he's going by like, ah, ah, you know, as they're flying yeah. all mm-hmm. over the place. And I get, I guess, that it's trying to be like, well, it's actually a story about this guy, and yeah. so his story did end, and he took them with him. But yeah, it's kind of like. Um, I don't know. It, it, it does kind of, even though it is resolved, it feels too pat, maybe. Is that what we're going sure. for? Yeah. Okay. And we don't get any time to, like, I mean, as soon as he falls and that, that crater closes up, credits. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I appreciate when we get out quick, but man, that was quick. And not even yeah. a theme he, song. He barely the got in there before the credits came up. That somebody could sing, you know, over the credits. <laughs> no. Bug, bug. This is still back in the day when, like, your monster's dead. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Movie is over. <laughs> Lights are coming yep. up. <laughs> Get out. That's We're going to show this thing again in 15 minutes. Yeah, I kind of I kind of love the 70s, like, abrupt ending. I just wish it had been, like, I was kind of hoping it would be, like, they blow up his house, he dies, and then we see them, like, fly off into the distance. Like, oh, like now they're the going to take over. Now they're going to take over the world and then credits. Yeah. I would have yeah. liked that better. Yeah. I know. I'm actually yeah, kind of like a big cloud of them, just like yeah, towards like another town or something. Or just like yeah. fly past a cow real quick and then fly away, and it's just a skeleton that falls over, <laughs> like something like that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am kind of curious why the uh, I mean, because so basically, then it's an optimistic ending. Uh, I wonder why they opted for that. Because I mean, either you have your option of a pessimistic ending, and I don't know what the book did. Did you look into that, Sean? The oh no, I didn't look plague? into the book. Okay. I was just curious. I guess I should have. How does it end in the book? Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe you can we'll find that out during uh, the mailbag segment, which is coming up next. Uh, we're going to answer some of your mail. This is the viewer or listener participation segment of our show. So uh, we're going to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Oh, thanks, Igor. Oh, he brought us meat jello. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> he tried. Oh, Yo, I, uh, that's, mm. not, that's not meat jello. This is old meat. Oh, <laughs> no. And it's delicious. Um, I, I, I forgot what I was looking up and it's been 10 minutes and I just opened my phone and the meat jello popped back up because that was my last image search. So I was very surprised just now. Thanks, Igor. Yeah, gross. All right. Well, we want you to join us on this magical mystery tour. And to do that, you can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or maybe you prefer Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or maybe email's your thing. Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Or if you're an Instagrammer, we're there too. It's Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, MF Mad, the keeper of the uh, Saturday Night Freak Show wall of fame, who alerted us to uh, Jesse Vint's, uh, you know, uh, escalation, ascension to the wall, says, is it weird my favorite part of the movie is the kitchen from the Brady Bunch? <laughs> no, that's not weird. <laughs> no. uh, Mark Zidane says I've seen this movie it starts out good then it takes a drastic turn in the end the final bugs reveal will leave you wondering who green lit this yeah that's fair they, they green yes, lit it, I have they red lit it. questions still yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker says he hasn't seen it but if I have to if I have to take it if wait I have to take it if I could ever live in a certain era. It was when these movies were big in theaters just to come and see some of the gimmicks. So he's talking about the William Castle uh, legacy of, uh, yeah. Because you said there was a gimmick on this one, Sean, right? Uh, He wanted a gimmick, but the the, uh, producer said no to it. The brush under the the chairs. To make it feel like bugs were passing by. 
Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says the TV ads for this movie freaked my 10 year old self out big time back in the day, but now a movie about mutant flaming cockroaches. Sign me up. Well, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know what, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Andrew Bradford says my wife and I watched most of the movie a few weeks ago on Hulu. It's a crap movie from what we saw, but there was a lot of stuff to make fun of, which made it enjoyable to us. In particular was a scene where the wife meets her demise in the kitchen that quickly escalated into a full blown four alarm fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Nelson Nascimento says it's an interesting entry into the nature goes crazy genre. But despite some interesting visuals, the movie feels and moves way too slow. Story-wise, it feels like the movie may have been a bit of an inception for Guillermo del Toro's Mimic. I can see that. What was that yeah. called? It was called like the Judas Bug or something. Was the, right? It was, oh. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, something like that. Uh, customers also watched writes in and says, I watched this a couple months ago for our, our podcast. That's the customers also watch podcast. I assume, uh, it's decent, but nonsensical. A few good deaths warning, but not a movie spoiler. The cat does not do well with the roaches. <laughs> you know, no. for warning us. That is appreciated. <laughs> mm, yeah, I, I wish I had warning. read that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, we posted some, uh, you know, we were soliciting, uh, Igor's mailbag feedback. Uh, we posted some pictures of people with, you know, the bugs like stuck on their face from this movie. Lisa Paget saw one and said, this picture alone just messed me up. Yeah. It is gross. Right. There's um, a lot of in the ear is really gross. Yeah. A lot Gives of bug close ups and, ear bugs and there's a lot of heebie-jeebie bug shots in this movie. A lot of heebs, yeah. So last week we watched a movie called Invasion USA. Uh, Hell yeah! No. Amos <laughs> Martinez writes in and says, the company I work for is actually sponsored by Chuck Norris. He even attends the yearly company meeting. My boss has <laughs> pictures with him in her office. She says he's a big terrifying teddy bear. We exclusively sell his brand of bottled water called Seaforce which every bottle promises that it's like a roundhouse kick to the face. Everyone, what? <laughs> I, have, I have to look this up. C4, right so now. water. Uh, he says, everybody knows that Jesus could walk on water, but did you know that Chuck Norris can swim through land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's fascinating. Holy shit. C4. How, how, how can you get sponsored by C Force? <laughs> oh my god. god. That would be the best sponsor ever. I want, I want to more. I wonder if they have like an ad oh, with Chuck Norris at the beginning of, you know, just like uh my bottled water. Every bottle will hear the freak show. We drink kick you in the water. Face. But the only water we drink has a kick to it. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Sean Rogers says Chuck Norris is the only guy who can run around the world and punch himself in the back of the head. <laughs> Stephen Haynes says before. Chuck Norris wasn't born. He spin kicked his way out of the womb. As a baby or as an adult man? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 There's yes, a Sean. There's a thing on the website at the bottom of the website. It says official Sea Force fact. Chuck Norris heard you were thirsty. So he punched the ground and made the earth cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> yeah, we need to get sponsored by them. That's oh, amazing. Oh, that's awesome. We need to get sponsored by these people. Uh, let's see. Travis Legler writes in and says, uh, I was a little surprised that Sean didn't mention that Billy Drago, who was in Invasion USA, was in Tremors 4. And he was also the villain, main villain on The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. That's that Western TV show that Bruce Campbell starred in. Yeah. Hey. I haven't seen, I haven't watched uh, part four of Tremors in a while. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I don't watch them all, all the time, Colin. Some are pretty bad. It kind of seemed like you did. Yeah. It, I was under the impression that it was just Tremors four and Halloween, the whole series going all the time at Sean's house. Uh, Chris Passion writes in and says, one of the biggest regrets of my life was having missed meeting Chuck Norris by three days when he was passing through Ramadi. He says that's not a joke, by the way. Damn. That would bum me out, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, about uh, the previous week's episode, we watched Jonah Hex. Jacob Laws writes in and says, uh, we were talking about, like, whatever happened to Megan Fox. 
who was in that movie. Jacob Laws says, I believe that she was fired from the Transformers franchise because she compared Michael Bay to Hitler and Steven Spielberg, who was a producer, wasn't having any of that because he did Schindler's List and Nazis are very serious. Um, sure. Grant Parrish. I mean, to be honest, we've all definitely had a boss that we've called Hitler before, just not publicly. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Uh, Grant Parrish says, you don't remember her seminal performance in Bad Boys 2 as, according to IMDb, Stars and Stripes Bikini Kid Dancing Under Waterfall? <laughs> no, long, long that one. title. Yeah, got that one. There you go. And Sean, you'll appreciate this one about Spookies, which I think was uh, the last movie that you brought. Uh, Cecilia Constantini, who was the production designer an art director on the movie Spookies uh, ah. wrote in and she said, because we were talking about um, Spookies. I was wondering who this was. I saw her comments and I was wondering who this was. Yeah. Uh, so Spookies was a movie that was filmed as Twisted Souls uh, and then it was edited down and then a new movie was made called Spookies uh, in, out of the, the original footage from Twisted Souls and this new footage and the two things do not fit together at all. Uh, so Cecilia clears it up. So here you go. We were talking about this in the podcast. You waited until this episode and here you go. But she says principal shooting was finished on twisted souls, at least two hours worth of a movie. But Jenny Joseph's who got the ultimate director, uh, credit just wanted the credit. So she added, uh, she added her own, um, footage to the movie. So basically that's the story right there from, uh, someone who worked on it that, uh, yeah, there was a full movie. She just cut half of it out of it, created new stuff so she could get a, a director credit. So that's says aw- the art director. That's awesome. Thanks for yeah. writing in. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now we're going to go around the table and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie bug and whether you should watch it. We're going to start with Holly. Holly, uh, what did you think about tonight's movie? <laughs> it's this fiery movie called bug. Um, you know, I was kind of on the fence about this one because there were parts that I really did enjoy um, just the ridiculousness of it. Um, there were parts that made me laugh quite a bit. Um, but we were, you know, one of our listeners wrote in and said that it was kind of, it was kind of too slow. And I, I agree with that. It was, it was much too slow. Um, and it didn't really, like we've been saying the whole time, it felt like two different movies. Like it just didn't jive. It felt really, um, confusing like i don't know who anyone's name was i don't know the motivation like it was just really random like the whole time and i really i really would rather it have been the invasion like the bug invasion movie that we were hoping it would be you know i agree with you know what was sean was saying earlier about how he was expecting a kingdom of the spiders kind of situation um i i was hoping for that as well that's um (sighs) Yeah, there was there was some good stuff in it, but not enough to really keep my attention. Um, I was I was bored quite a bit through this. Um, yeah, I don't think I could run, recommend it. There was just not enough to to really give me what I wanted from this movie. It wasn't fun enough. Like there were some fun bits, but it wasn't enough to really to really keep me so. I can't say that I recommend uh, a bug. I also don't like that it was just called Bug. I, I want bugs or invasion we of live. the bugs. Like something. We live, yes. Why wasn't it called We Live? What's wrong it with the been. Hephaestus plague? That's not marketable. Okay. No. Bug, bug no. plague. <laughs> yeah. I, I need more than bug, though. But yeah, no, it, it didn't give me enough, so I, I can't recommend bug. Uh, Michaela, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I was actually, like, hoping I wouldn't have to go first because I couldn't... I, I can't really like I'm on the fence with this one too because yeah. like them spelling out stuff on the wall is fucking hilarious to <laughs> me and like I'll probably watch that clip over and over again and maybe even make some gifts out of it like it's pretty great but the amount of unibombering that you have to sit through to get to that like the movie just it switches gears to a way more boring movie halfway through and I don't understand why that is like yeah, I do imagine- the scientist movie 
Yeah. Like, could you imagine if in the middle of Kingdom of the Spiders, Bill Shatner was like, you know what? I'm going to do something with these spiders. And like, would that became the movie? You'd be like, what? No, the movie is the town's being taken over. Like, that's the movie. I, yeah. I don't know. I'd be with Shatner for 45 minutes. It yeah, but be- it's it, this movie doesn't have a Shatner, though. Like, no. this movie doesn't have anyone like that. I, I'd rather watch Shatner mad scienti- scientisting for 30 minutes, but that's yeah, not. Hammer nails. Yeah. <laughs> we need to remake this movie with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I actually think this movie would be like ripe for a remake, but like I don't know who would go see it or who would be for. But remake the hell out of this, and yeah, get someone good to play that the role of Jim. You know, um, I do like a lot of the animal cruelty in this movie is way too much for me. It's it's pornographic the way it's shot, and it is unapologetic and. That and that, so that's made like I can excuse probably more of it than I would like in other movies, but this one's just so blatant and so like they just they really seem to enjoy doing it, and I don't like that. And I, I just I don't think I can recommend it because it it's only like an hour and forty, but like it doesn't have a an, an act structure like you would expect of mm-hmm. of most movie, movies, and so it feels longer. And it's just. The the funny parts where I was laughing out loud were really, you know, fun. Uh, I think in some ways this would be a good drive-in movie because you can get up and go to the bathroom and get, like, a refill and you're fine. Um, yeah, and just come back to the sense. bugs talking on yeah. the wall and be like, wait, yeah. I, what did I miss? I went to get a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I don't think I could recommend it for most people to watch, so I'm going to have to say no on that. Colin? Well, I mean, I agree with a lot of what you're saying because I think uh, the not having a traditional plot structure, you know, it's because we're accustomed to it that we're kind of, you know, you, you're you not sure. It doesn't have that dramatic engine that's installed, right, where you're like, okay, I, I understand what the conflict is and where we have to go with this because it seems like the guy is creating a mutation and then there's another mutation after that. And, I mean, there could be another mutation after that, right? It's like I don't know at what point they're actually going to, tie this off and call it the end right Mm -hmm. um however saying that like i'm acknowledging that but the fact that its plot structure was so different the fact that i thought i was in one movie and then it became a different movie actually that does kind of i probably am going to recommend it because you know, cause I wasn't expecting it. It toyed with my expectations, I guess. And this, you know, might be one of those things where you watch way too many goddamn movies and they all kind of turn out the same. This one was like, Oh, you're doing something different here. Okay. What are we doing? And then it's like, okay, we're doing a mad, now we're a mad scientist movie. And there's a lot of science. He's talking you through, uh, <laughs> you know, is it the entomology? Is that uh, of entomology? Yeah. Entomology of insects and bugs, and you know, as he's breeding them and watching them, and then waits and then comes back and checks to see what's happening. So, I mean, there's a lot of that. I was interested in all that stuff, though. And then when the bugs, when it actually started going, to like, okay, now we're going with super intelligent talking bugs that understand English. I was like, okay, <laughs> we have gone into batshit crazy territory with this movie, and I appreciate that they're writing stuff on the wall. And then when the demon bugs showed up. At the end i'm like oh okay demon bugs with their big beady if, green if had, bug eyes if it had hung more if it had hung more on all of that it would have been so much better yeah yeah i think it it, it should have leaned into it more but i guess what yeah. i got out of it was enough for me to appreciate it so i think i will recommend a bug if you've listened this far i mean you know exactly what type of movie it is now you know what to expect so um yeah for you i would recommend it but i'm gonna assume Sean's not going to like it. We'll find out. Sean, what do you think? Ah, uh, don't toss your assumptions in there. I'll tell you right off the bat. I am going to recommend this movie. Holy cow. I it's know. A split uh, you show. all made good points. Um, and I recognize that because, um, I mean, I was kind of left like I was surprised as well. This movie was not what I expected it to be. Um, but uh, putting putting aside what my expectations were, what I got um, I did like. I did like the first part of the movie where people are getting attacked, and I'm pretty okay with the mad scientist part of it. I I found it interesting. Um, I think there was enough of it there. Uh, it is quite a tonal shift, which will throw a lot of people off. Um, but 
uh, oh, they're coming out of the ground again. Um, but he, they do start writing things on the wall at some point. Um, and he's going nuts. Um, it went different places, but uh, I found them to be uh, interesting different places. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to recommend Bug. I got enough entertainment out of this. Uh, enough people were set on fire and enough bugs thrown at people's faces uh, were, were done for me. So, yeah, I, I recommend Bug. I think it's interesting enough um for you guys to go and watch it i think you'll get some good stuff out of it so yeah that's a that's a a go for me on bug all right well there you go um surprising and best acting by a squirrel in a movie that's been covered by the saturday night feature (laughs) okay so next week we're gonna watch him well we may be watching this we don't know i mean they could change their mind (laughs) before that (laughs) but next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by ollie uh, Holly, what will we be watching next week? Maybe. Um, well, I'm not going to lie. I considered bringing a House of Wax just because. <laughs> I knew somebody would. <laughs> I thought about it because it has been on my list. So, but we'll get there. Um, but I don't. I don't think we're done with nature yet. I think we're going to stay in nature. So we're going to watch Congo. Oh boy! Hell yeah! <laughs> the gray, the gray oh, gorillas. <laughs> uh, Tim Curry. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. And Bruce Campbell briefly. I think he's yeah, in the Bruce beginning. Campbell, yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. True. All right. So that's uh, next week. We're watching Michael Crichton's Congo on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.